I invested $15,000 USD into 7th level Jeremy Miner's Inner Circle program for 6 months where I received 3 coaching calls a week with Jeremy and his team, access to a private Facebook group and an online course where we went over script writing, tonality, objection handling. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about what I thought of the video, what I thought of the courses and was it worth it and what were my biggest key takeaways from the course, so let's get into it. So the biggest thing I wanna answer is, obviously you're wondering is why did I buy the course and was it worth it? And I'll get into that at the end where I'm gonna be talking about some of the things that I thought and what I had wished I knew earlier before even buying the program. So why did I buy the program? Well, like most people, I wanted to improve my selling system, my sales process at the time. And I had been following Jeremy on Instagram and on Facebook and his free group for probably about a year and a half and just kind of looking at his content, like most people that are considering his program or, or already in his program. And I was looking at, you know, really how he conducted his training and just some of the freebies that he was giving. And I really enjoyed following him. I thought he was um, an absolute killer shark in sales. And so, you know, I decided my team and I, my very small sales team of two people, and I decided to invest in the program. Full disclosure, before I even bought the program, I I had already generated millions of dollars in our online e-commerce course where about a year previous to this I had received the two comma club award from ClickFunnels where we generated over a million dollars USD in our online course. There were things that I also wanted to improve for myself and for my sales team where you know there was like blind spots where I really didn't know what we were doing wrong, how we could improve our current uh, process and even to the point where myself personally I was closing at about a 35 to 40 percent closing ratio in our own business so again this is our online course that I wanted to do this is something that we created I did have a small sales team but majority of it I was doing the sales calls but again watching his stuff I knew that even that 35 or 40 percent closing ratio well why don't I increase it to 50 percent what if I increased it to 60 percent even without changing any of our lead generation strategies so that's really why I I was motivated to buy that program. The other thing that I also wanted to do was improve our current script. So again, my script was working well, as I said, 35 to 40% closing ratio, but I knew even in that, I could improve the questions that we were asking, even down to the tonality, like how do I talk to a prospect? You know, what questions do I ask? What probing questions am I asking? You know, how do I handle their objections at the end? How do I make my pitch where you know it resonates to what they just told me their problems were and it sounds exactly like what they're looking for so with all of that said I knew there were ways that we can improve it and I mean being an entrepreneur in business you know that's one thing you should consider is right you don't know what you don't know right and what you don't know is hurting you and that's how I thought of it too and that was another motivating factor from what I had been watching from him and just even talking to his sales rep uh, on the call where he was like hey you know what he, he challenged me well what would it look like in revenue if you kept everything the same in your business but you just got better at selling you kept your follow-up sequence the same you kept your ads that are running or your organic methods which is mainly what we were doing at the time the same but you just got better at sales you know what would that look like and, and honestly I asked myself I ran the numbers we were doing around you know, probably close to $50,000 a month in revenue, which was, again, in the, the online space, you know, it's, it's pretty good, right? But again, I wanted to improve that. Now, one of the nice things about the online uh, inner circle program with Jeremy is the script writing that he does. Essentially, they've gone through so many different businesses and online, either B2B or B2C, and they've crafted up a lot of scripts. So one thing I really enjoyed was there were already people in the real estate space that, that offered real estate online training, which is what we do, and so, I wasn't totally starting from scratch. I had a script that I can start building upon based on the NEPQ system, right? So that was really nice. For six months, I got to talk to Jeremy in a group setting where he worked with me on my script or on his script, I should say, where I gave him information about our business. What do we offer? What sort of questions or problems does my prospect have? What are they currently doing to solve that problem? And all of these things. Now, this is one thing that I wish I had had known earlier was when I joined that program, I wasn't really aware of that 
you know, I wasn't really technically supposed to ditch my script, even though that is what I did. You know, and that was one huge mistake by us. And, you know, I wish we were informed of that. But again, I'm not blaming Jeremy or his team. You know, that was just something that I didn't ask about and I made a decision. But really what we did is we ditched our script. So the script that was already working, the script that I just talked about that I wanted to just improve and just ask better questions, I ended up just ditching that script with me, my team, and I took on the NEPQ script. So because I did that change and I did it fairly fast. So within six months, we started using the NEPQ script. So even though I did have better questions regarding real estate and what we offer, because it was so brand new to me and I was learning how to use tonality and ask better probing questions and to really re even rewrite my, my offer, my pitch that I make at the end of the script, because uh, this was all new to me, our sales ended up plummeting. We dropped from like 35 to 40% to like 15 to 20% in a matter of like a month. I was just like dumbfounded. I'm like, why is this happening? I thought I would be better at closing or increasing my 35, 40% to like 50 or 60%. And I, you know, after discussing this with him, and just kind of sharing my frustrations. You know, I learned that not anybody, people coming into the program, you're not supposed to leave your script, especially if it's already working. What you're supposed to do is you're so slowly supposed to adapt your current script and get better questions to ask or even more questions to ask where you can probe further. You can even go into your pitch where you, when you're making a pitch, you're setting up your script in a way that it solves the main problems that your prospect has. Now, because I did these changes really fast, and because I didn't have time to practice this, it, it really dropped our sales, which was just insane because that wasn't the reason that I got into the course, the Inner Circle program, it was to improve. Now, these are things that, again, you're gonna learn over time. Whether it's Jeremy's program or not, if you have a script right now and it's already working and, and you're probably doing, let's say you're even doing 10%, 15%, there are always better questions that you can add. You know, now, do you need to join a $15,000 program for doing that? No, there's probably a lot of online resources even in Jeremy's program where you can again slowly adapt and ask better questions right so that's one thing to consider when you're doing that now for us you know after being out of the course and now we've been out of the course for probably about a year and a half now my sales have gone back to what they were right are they at that 50 or 60 percent close ratio unfortunately not uh, is my script do I feel that it is better I do feel it's better now I do feel where you know, that I, I didn't have enough questions on my old script. I do feel that I'm better equipped to ask more questions, more probing questions. I'm able to dig deeper. And because I did learn Jeremy's tonality, which is something I wasn't uh, using a lot, I've been able to just kind of slow things down when I'm on those sales calls. I've been able to use that tonality where, you know, before I was even doing sales calls, all my sales calls, either on Skype phone or we were just calling them. So they weren't seeing me like this. They weren't seeing me on a Zoom meeting or a video. So that's been a huge game changer for us too, is, you know, learning on just getting on the phone where process prospect can see you. They can see you. They can see you lean in. They can, and you can see them leaning in. You can read their body language. That has been massive. And again, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of resistance there when I didn't want to do it because I just felt like, you know what, if I'm going to be reading a script or especially if I'm reading a script, I don't want this prospect to see like I can read something. I'm reading it on a teleprompter. Uh, so that was one of my fears. But again, I've learned to get over that. And again, it's practice. And the other thing, too, that Jeremy stressed a lot was he didn't want people, again, reading a script, right, sounding robotic and not natural. He wanted you to memorize this. And I, I remember him sharing this many times on the calls. He, he was saying like, you know, why even in Hollywood, like let's say, you know, some of the best actors in Hollywood, why do they get the roles that they do? Is it because they sound scripted? No, even though they are reading off a script and they're doing that movie scene, they sound natural. They've taken a script, they've internalized it, they've adapted to that character. And that was really, that analogy really spoke to me. I was like, yeah, you know what? Some of these best actors, and some of the best salespeople, they are scripted, but they don't sound scripted. They've memorized that script. They've made it internal. So it just comes out of them naturally. And that was really, really important to, for me to realize in my team. So again, we've learned to practice that. And again, do I have the script memorized now? 
No, but do I know a lot of the flow that he goes over? You know, where he goes over different kinds of questioning, you know, opening up and sit, opening up and connecting questions, situation questions, problem awareness questions. And again, he goes through these different parts of the script. So have I adapted that? Do I understand the framework? Yes, I do, which I think has, is better. Equip me now to ask better questions on my calls. Now, this is what I see also with a lot of online influencers, salespeople, and again, people that have taken Jeremy's training. And even for myself is a lot of people that I see online or even on videos or whatever, they sound like Jeremy, right? So when they're on there, one thing you want to know is you want to adapt his system. You want to adapt his questions and probing and tonality but you want to sound like yourself. You don't want to sound like Jeremy. You don't want to copy it word for word. What I mean by that is we're in the online space. We're always looking at improving our sales system, whether we're looking to run ads. So even after being in the program for a year and a half, I talk to other salespeople, either over DMs or in person, and I can tell they've taken Jeremy's program or they've gone through it. And sometimes I call them out on it because again, I've taken through it. So I know how he sounds and I know what he does. And it, again, it doesn't sound natural. And the other thing is Jeremy is a huge influence Influencer now. He's been on podcasts, he's been on Instagram for a while and, and all these things. So a lot of people have either gone through his course or even the free training. So when you're on there and you're on the call, especially if you're talking to another person in business or you're doing B2B, you want to sound like yourself. What you want to do is you want to integrate those questions, but be yourself. Don't try to be Jeremy. Don't try to be any other sales guru online. And again, I've learned that the hard way where when I was on these calls, when I was using it, script I just kind of felt icky I'm like this doesn't sound like me however over time I'm like these are the questions now that I ask and I do use that tonality but it's more I've had to really think about these things as like do I sound like that how do I actually want to portray myself even though I am reading or I'm memorizing a script and I am reading off a script but I want it to sound natural and this is one of those things whether you have your current script whether you're considering his program is you need to practice just like back to that Hollywood actor analogy, why they get those roles is because they have practiced over and over again. They've rehearsed it. So with you, you need to also do that, whether you're his script or you're using another script, is you want to sound natural. And a prospect's gonna be able to tell 100%. If you sound fake or you sound like this is really you, you really care, and you're really listening and you're engaging with them instead of looking at, okay, well, what do I need to read rest off the script? And again, I laugh at this, but that's what we were doing as well on a lot of the calls in the beginning is, you know, I was reading off a script and I could just tell the prospect could sense that, especially when it was on a Zoom call. Now, going back to the course, there was really certain things that the offer had. So when I looked at the NEPQ Inner Circle program, the six month program that they offered where they did weekly group coaching three, I think it was three or four times a week, plus they had access to an online course that they had built. When I looked at that, the one thing that really stood out to me was the role playing session. So on these calls, you know, with Jeremy, with Matt Ryder, with Marco, did the objection handling training, I was able to role play with them. So even using the script that I was working on with them, they would pretend they were a prospect, I was the person selling. And again, they were able to work with me and say, you know what, Manjeet, you could have said this, I think you talked too much here, this is where you could have probed a little bit better, this is where you could have asked a little bit more questions to understand their situation. I found that very useful because it wasn't just, I'm reading a bunch of theory, I'm learning it, but I'm not practicing it. So we got to practice that on the tonality, uh, on the role playing sessions. And again, the other thing in the, in the inner circle program is they actually, because the group is so big, you can actually message people and DM them and say, hey, do, do you mind role playing? Do you want to role play with me? I see that you're selling a similar offer to me. So I got to do that and I got to meet a lot of people in the program as well. So that was really nice too. They had a huge community and this is just in their paid group that they have. They obviously have a, uh, a free group on Facebook that I think that has 100,000 people in it. So that's another great resource and that's really where I started before I invested in the program, right? So again, if you don't maybe have the funding or you're, you're maybe just getting started in sales, I would probably consider going into the, some of the free stuff, you know, his YouTube channel, his Instagram, and start adapting some of those things. You don't need to drop $15,000 right away like I did. We did that because we obviously had the money and we had been in sales for a while already. But again, start with the free stuff, right? Adapt that. And again, like I said, don't just ditch your script or your current process, but slowly adapt some better questioning that you can do. And you'll see a lot of change there as well. 
The other thing that I really enjoyed was on one of the weekly calls, we did sales call recording. So you can actually download your Zoom call or your Skype or whatever system that you had where you had the call recorded and you can submit that question before you jump on the sales call recording sessions. So this was good because I would, I would get off on a call on a salesperson or on a prospect whether I sold them the course or not and it usually wasn't where I didn't close the deal and I had certain timestamps where I'm like, you know what, I felt like this wasn't good, this is where I think I talked too much or this is where I think I screwed up and I was able to submit those questions prior to the call and then on, uh, again, on the call with the other members and the nice thing is we're all learning together, right? There's no judgment here or anything. You're able to submit that and they're able to listen to that call and give you live feedback where they thought you could improve in certain parts, right? Where you could have probed better, you could have asked better questions, you could have listened more. It was really good because I would be listening to these calls with them and I didn't even realize where somebody told me about, you know, emotionally, someone told me where, you know, they were really struggling financially. This is why they wanted to get into real estate. This is where they wanted to get into business. And because I was so scripted I totally blew over that I didn't even hear them say that and again listening to their feedback and having them listen to those sales calls recordings I was able to realize that I'm not even really listening or I wasn't listening as well as I thought I was on these sales calls and that was huge and the other thing when it came to the sales calls or recordings it wasn't just you getting feedback on your own call you can actually hear them give feedback on other people so other people that may have a similar offer to yours or maybe they're in a totally different offer but you're able to also listen to their feedback I think having that was really crucial to me because again you're not going to just learn from one person you want to learn from multiple perspectives so because I was able to listen on those calls I do feel that I was more well-rounded to again adapt to different people's style of selling the way that they talk the way that they pause the way that they ask questions and, and again that was really important where we we were able to learn from other people as well now the biggest thing I probably took away from those weekly calls was just having a chance to submit my questions. The Q&A or the live calls with Jeremy where he went over those scripts, he was able to listen to how I talk and listen to those calls and listen to like, not listen, but like look at my script and what I was asking. And I didn't even realize this, but you know, on those calls, again, I naturally have high, high energy, I'm an extrovert. And when I was on these, some of these calls with some of the people that were maybe like lower energy or they were an introvert or just, you know, a little bit more reserved, I realized, or I realized after talking to Jeremy, is I need to slow things down on some calls when I'm with people. I need to mirror them on those calls, right? If they're leaning in, I need to lean in. If they're like, you know, if they're just talking a little bit quieter, I need to like match that tone because again, naturally, psychologically, people like doing business with people that are similar to them. And again, you're not trying to be a, a somebody fake, but you're trying to, again, build that rapport. So that was really huge for me as well is where I got to realize that. I got to realize that I need to slow down on some of these calls. And again, when I was talking to somebody that was a very like strong A personality, somebody that wasn't opening up to me on these calls, when I came across someone like that, I usually would get jaded and be like, okay, well, this person's not opening up. They're not interested in my offer. They don't really need the help. And that wasn't the case when talking to Jeremy, again, Jeremy's a pro, right? He's done tons of sales calls. He's listened to so many people's training. He's also been in sales himself and, and sold a lot of courses and whatnot. When I was listening to him, having him show me how to get somebody with an A personality to open up and asking them to actually, and, and giving me better questions to ask them where, you know, I can realize like, why are they even on the call here, right? So those things, again, I, I had no idea how to like really frame myself. So again, I was able to adapt that through my script writing. And again, not that I used it all the time, but when I knew that I had somebody that had maybe, you know, a stronger personality, I was able to learn and talk to them the way that they really needed me where I got them to open up. Was the Jeremy Minor Inner Circle program worth it? I would say yes it was. You know even though going back to what I was saying earlier because our, our, our script was switched so quickly and our sales plummeted even through that process I did learn a lot uh, better questioning on my script. I learned how to probe better. I learned how to ask better questions. I learned how to objection handle. And I just learned even different objections that I was getting where it would trip me up before because I didn't really know 
how to answer them, or even more importantly, I didn't know how to use the right tonality at the right time and ask those questions where I really dug deeper and found out, you know, what's behind this question. So learning things like that, yes, that's been a huge game changer for me and my team where I feel we're better equipped. I don't think there's any objection that we've gotten over the last year we don't where we don't know how to handle. So that's been really big and really important to me. And the other thing I wanna say is, I don't think one program or one teacher is gonna give you all the answers, you know, whether it's Jeremy or someone else. And again, I've been in business or sales for almost half my life, right? I'm, I'm 40 years old. I got into business when I was 18. I got into real estate. I was selling life insurance. I've sold mutual funds. Um, we are in real estate. I've raised money. We've bought in deals. I've negotiated deals. And now we do e-commerce as well. And so again, I've learned from different people over the years. And what I've learned is you need to be holistic. It's not just a script that's going to make you money. It's not that. It's also... What are you doing when the prospect books on your calendar? Are you sending them a message? Are you sending them a video and saying, hey, I look forward to it? Are you sending them email marketing or are you sending them a sequence where you're just having more touch points, seven or eight touch points, even before they get on the call with you, right? What is your follow-up process with that person? Are you sending them any literature? any videos to do that. So again, these are things that I have also learned over the years. Again, going back to what I said, we, we've already generated over millions of dollars. We got that ClickFunnels award. We were doing fairly well when it comes to, again, you know, relating to what other people are doing. But even through that, I've learned that there's always improvement. I don't have all the answers still. And again, I'm not where I wanna be, but am I better than I was a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago? Yeah, for sure. Am I going to get better? Yes, because again, I'm always adapting, right? And that's what I see some of the best salespeople do is they adapt to the current market, to the current environment. Uh, based on what they're selling, right? So if there's certain tools that maybe weren't around one year ago, five years ago, but they're around today, that's gonna better equip you, right? You need to be thinking holistically how you can become better. And these are things that I'm still learning uh, over time. So for you, you need to consider that as well. You're not gonna learn everything from one person. So again, are you considering Jeremy's program? Are you considering another program? Ask yourself that and, and really know and have the right mindset going in where you know, you're not gonna get into a program, you're gonna get 100% closing ratio or you're gonna do that, but you're gonna always be learning and adapting and also learning from yourself. Really listening to those sales calls, which is another uh, thing that I uh, didn't do before is like listening to those calls where I, before I would be like, you know what, this is just wasting my time. I need to be doing uh, reach outs. I need to be doing more sales calls. I don't have time to go listen to my old sales calls, but again, and just like a professional athlete will watch and review some of their your plays where they screwed up or where they th they thought they could have done better it's no difference than a salesperson you know a professional in their own industry listening to those sales calls so again guys thank you for watching this video i hope you've taken some of the feedback that i've shared and i'd love to hear from you what are you been doing recently to improve your current sales process right what's working well for you have you taken other courses where maybe we haven't taken it or other courses where you found that you got a lot of value from I'd love to hear from you guys. We'll see you all soon.